Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca Franks. Um, my presentation is going to be a little bit different from everybody else's. Um, I'm going to tell you about my journey to becoming an Android developer. Basically I studied here at UJ. I completed a BSc Information Technology and then I went on to uh, get my honours in Information Technology here too. I then joined DBT as a mobile developer because I decided I wanted to focus more on Android development. So by then I'd already made up my mind, I want to be an Android developer and that's where I turned um, and DVT gave me the opportunity. I've been accredited with the status of a Google developer expert. So that means I'm an industry recognized leader in terms of um, Android and I'm doing active contributions to the community. So with that status comes um, the ability to go and give conference talks, uh, to fly overseas and um, experience Google I.O. for instance and generally just give back to the community and teach what I know about Android. So that's my journey on um, becoming a developer, an, an Android developer. And then just some apps that I have built already. So this is my uh, app that I work on in my spare time. Uh, all the code is open sourced on GitHub and it's for a nonprofit organization uh, called BookDash where they create these free kids books that you can read within the app. So, the best part about this whole app is that it's open source, which is why I wanted to um, highlight it today. And um, yeah, so you can check it out on GitHub if you want to, or download it from the Google Play Store. My full-time job <laughs> is that I actually work at MultiChoice, where I've been placed uh, through DBT. And for the last two and a bit years, I've been working on their DSTV Now application. I think the most rewarding part is that I get to make an app that clients can actually use in their own hands. So um, for me, that's why I like mobile development more than anything else, is that you actually can hold it. So, for instance, you can watch the sport on your, on your uh, phone or something like that. And it's just really, like, I really enjoy the, the client-facing apps like that. I'm going to give you a few tips as to what I think uh, would help you uh, become a better Android developer. So, if you don't know how to code, there's a lot of resources online. Um, learn to code, so that's code.org forward slash learn. Um, and then obviously like something like a BSc Computer Science or BSc Information Technology would help you in this career. It's not necessarily um, something that you would need. I have seen very successful developers without any degrees. So it is possible not to have a degree and do well in this industry. Okay, and then these are what I swear by, these Android development resources, but that's androidweekly.net. So what that is is a, a weekly newsletter where they send out really interesting blog posts for the week, videos, stuff like that you can, that you can go and watch. And um, it's a really, really good resource if you want to become a, a good Android developer. So you get it once a week in your inbox and you can read through all the cool articles that are posted. And then obviously blog posts, which come through from Android Weekly. And then obviously the, the Android developer documentation does provide a lot of um, content that you can look at. Quite recently, uh, Google's announced the Android Udacity Basics Nano degree that you can complete online. And that gives you a certification from Google to say you are a qualified Android developer. So that's also pretty cool to have on your CV if you're looking for a job as an Android developer. Trial and error is how you figure out a lot of things with development. Once you become the big Android developer, you know everything, or at least you're trying. Um, so you need to ask yourself, how do I keep learning? How do I enrich myself? How do I make myself a better developer? The first step is that you should be creating a blog, right? Share your experiences, teach everyone what you know, and you'll learn something in, as well. So what I found after creating my personal blog is that I've actually learned a lot more from writing my blog posts than what I did before I actually wrote the blog posts. So a lot of the time when you write something down, you have to be very aware of what you're actually writing down, and you have to be um, very knowledgeable in what you're actually saying, because people on the internet are cool. <laughs> So you need to know what you're writing down. So it's a very good learning experience. It teaches yourself what to write. And um, it also improves your writing skills. So I definitely suggest creating yourself a personal blog. Obviously, you'll also meet a lot of more people online once you've started interacting with the community. And then another thing that I can suggest um, to become a, a better developer is to attend a lot of meetups. So there's a lot of free meetups that are happening around Johannesburg all the time. I'm not sure if any is, anyone is aware or anyone has ever been to any, but um, there's one called the Developer User Group, which happens uh, once a month at the Microsoft office. So that's really some advice that I can give.